みなさんこんにちはお元気ですか Hi guys, my name is Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, はじめまして、Lisa です。You're most welcome to my channel where I teach Japanese in the most easiest and the fastest way. Okay, in this video, we will talk about top 5 Japanese expressions that you need to know. Okay, now I would say they are kind of gestures that you use while speaking. So, when you want to react to something, do implement this into your Japanese. This would make you sound more like a native speaker, and、uh, like this would allow you to soften your flow of speech when you are speaking Japanese. And if you think a lot and then you answer, this would also give you time to think a bit. Okay. Before that, if you are here for the very first time, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the instant notification as soon as I upload any video. And please, please, please share it with your friends who are also trying to learn Japanese. Well then, Hajime m a s h o Let's get started! First of all, get your popcorns and cold drinks ready because now we're gonna dive deep into the ocean of Japanese gestures. Fine. Number one. Eto. Eto. Okay, now eto has two major functions that you need to know as a beginner. It's like when you want to say something but you hesitate to say it. Firstly, secondly, when you want to soften your question. Like sometimes when you ask a question, it may sound too direct and may offend the people in Japan. So, in that case, you need to add this eto. It's, it's not a hard and fast rule that you are supposed to add eto by rule, but when you add eto, it, it actually adds to the soft flow of your sentence. Okay, you'll understand it better when I give you some examples. So, eto is used when you are thinking of something. In English, we use um or ah、uh, like this when we think. This is the sound that we make. Similarly, in Japanese, we tend to say eto, eto, that way. Okay, firstly, you can put your index finger on your cheek while doing this eto and make sure that you don't say eto. That last o is actually elongated and you try to carry it long further, not too much, okay? Nextly,、uh, let me give you some examples. For example, Your friend asks for your suggestion for a weekend given. Like, what do we do for the weekend? You think for a while and then you answer as. Eto, party ni iku? Party ni iku? Let's go for a party. So, this is an informal way to say that. And in this case, you see, I used eto because you were actually showing, like, let me think over this for a while and then you answer it. Okay? Let's take one more example. Your parents ask you, Where do you want to go on your birthday? And you reply, You think over, and then you reply, Yes. Eto, Nihon ni kitai. Nihon ni kitai. Kitai is to go. Whenever you see this tai, it means you want, want to. So, ikitai, want to go. So, here I used eto again because I wanted to show, like, Uh, wait a minute, let me think over this. So, whenever you are thinking of something, you can give yourself a bit of time by using this eto. Nextly, as I already said, when you hesitate to say something, like if you want to say your friend that、uh, I'll be your friend, like I want to be a good friend of yours, you tend to say eto to show, to show your hesitation, that you're feeling nervous.、Mm, I hope you understand. Next is. Okay, this eto can also be、uh, called equivalent to ano. Ano also stands the same as eto, so you can actually replace ano at the place of eto anytime. So you can say ano party ni iku or ano nihon ni kitai、uh, in the both, both of the examples that I gave you before. Because they are exactly similar, but I think that eto is something that comes more instantaneously and more immediately. So, yeah, you can go for either. Number two. He? He? So, you see the hiragana alphabet. He? 
and this line actually indicates that the sound of he is actually carried forward. So just like the eto o sound doesn't end up there, it is carried long. Similarly, the he sound is also carried long. Now this is used to show your surprise or interest in something. So if you find something interesting, uh, you are gotta use this. So it's a really common expression amongst Japanese people. Like it's it's equivalent to wow in English. So it's like if an American and a Japanese person see something cool, the American will be like, hmm, cool. But the Japanese will be like, hey, this hey expression is just so common. So, so common. I'm just kidding. We actually do not use it so unnecessarily. We only use it when when you find something quite of interesting or if it's it's uh, new for you right so for example you were helping me decorate my new house that i've recently shifted to and just then you find my childhood album and you're just so excited to see it so you'll be like hey, kore wa nan desu ka? Are wa desu ka? so you you're like wow what is this is this your album okay so that's when you use Hey, to show your interest and surprise. So please do not get confused between this hey, which is equivalent to wow in English, and eh, which is equivalent to oh my god, maybe. So it, it, it's kind of like you can use eh instead of hey, probably, but the slight difference is that hey shows your interest. And eh shows your surprise, all of a sudden surprise, right? As you can see. Okay, number three. Mm. Mm. Now, it's it's a really really basic word, and it is used to show that you agree or listen to somebody. Mm. Literally means yes in an informal way. So just like yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I see. That's what we do in English. So this yes actually corresponds to mm in Japanese. So a Japanese would really do this with a constant gap of five seconds. Mm, 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 mm. And that is how like you gotta do this because if you don't do this, it's a kind of um, like you're bored or you're not listening to the person. So please make sure that you say this. Mm, mm. To show that yeah I'm listening to you and I'm um yeah I'm listening. So this may irritate or even sound funny to a foreigner, probably an American, but we don't do this because we we don't want to offend that person by making him feel like we are least bothered or we are uninterested in what he is saying. So when you say this, mm, you make sure you actually make sure of that person like I'm listening to you and you can continue speaking. So please do this mm, when you are listening to a Japanese person's narration and even if you find this bored, please. Um, this mm, is an informal way. Formally, we say hi. Hi. So if you see two persons that are talking to each other, they really tend to say this hi, hi. Like in a meeting or when women sit in a gossip, a kitty party. Or you did this hi or mm, depending upon whether the situation is formal or informal. Like if your teacher is explaining to you about something, you are gonna say hi because she is other than you and she is having a higher social post than you. And if your friend is telling you her experience, maybe she went to a park and all. So in that case, you gotta say mm. Okay, number four. Sa sa. One thing that you find common is both eto, ano, sa, he, e have the last sound getting carried. But in case of mm and hi, you don't have to do like mm, no, it's simply mm, okay? Sa actually means I have no idea or I don't know. Simply that. So if somebody asks you something and you have least idea about this, you can be like sa. To say I don't know directly sounds rude in Japanese, so we rather say uh, I don't know. This is how we say that I'm sorry that I don't know what you are asking about. So go for this sa when somebody asks you something and we don't know how to, what to do. Okay? For example, here is a conversation between a taxi driver and this lady, Minami Atsuma. 
So, Minami Natsuma says, Unten Chusan, Koko Kara, Yokohama Hotel Made, Nanpun Deska? Unten Chusan, Koko Kara, Yokohama Hotel Made, Nanpun Deska? Next, the taxi driver. Takushi no undenshu. He replies as sa. Okay, so I think you got an idea of the sa from this conversation. Minami actually asks that the driver, how many minutes does it take for me to go from here till the Yokohama Hotel? The driver actually doesn't have idea of it, so he replies as sa. I have no idea. Okay, so that's how it works. If you want to read the rest of the conversation, you can go for it. So, I hope you understood this one. Number five. So desu ne. Or, so da ne. So desu ne means, that's right, alright, or, yeah, yeah, I'm listening. So this so desu ne and so da ne are formal and informal respectively. You can also use this when you are listening to somebody and you want to show that you, know, you want to acknowledge that person. So, you must have got an idea how important we as Japanese find it to not offend the person and to, and to show that we are attentively listening to what he or he, she is saying. Anyway, so I hope you got these five gestures. So, if you enjoyed this lesson, please could you like, subscribe, share, and comment. And let me know if this video was helpful. Mata ne! See you next time!